Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing the new off-Broadway musical Dead Outlaw with music and lyrics by David Yazbek and Eric Ella Pena, book by Itamar Moses, conceived by David Yazbek, directed by David Cromer, and running through April 7th at Minetta Lane Theater at 18 Minetta Lane in New York City. Help bring more life to my Patreon page by becoming a patron. For as little as $1 a month, you can support my channel here, as well as my podcast, Yesterday's Matinee. Thank you to my patrons, and welcome to the new ones. A link will be in the description. Fame can be an odd duck. So it was, in the case of Elmer McCurdy, who after being a failed outlaw, being killed by a posse in Oklahoma at the age of 31 in 1911, spent the next 65 years being used off and on as a curiosity, traveling from exhibition to exhibition, being put on display for people to view. For David Yazbek, who composed the Tony Award winning The Band's Visit, to conceive of a musical about such a morbid story, I think is brilliant, and the gallows humor that he, Eric Della Pena, and Itamar Moses come up with is unapologetically dark but funny as the show satirizes the sometimes horrible nature of humanity to capitalize on not only the unfortunate but the dead. When considering exhibitions like Bodies, where dead people are put on display for public viewing under the premise of educational purposes, the ethical issues are not closed for debate. Running at about an hour and 40 minutes, the musical is essentially split in two parts. The first half focuses on Elmer, played by Andrew Durand during his mortal state, starting with his childhood where he was deceived about his parentage. Once he is told who his parents really are, he becomes a rebellious youth and an abusive drinker before running off to find his own life in the West. We journey with him through his adventures, from marriage to time in the army, to being recruited to join a team of bank robbers. The second half of the show follows his journey after life, and how he becomes more famous as a corpse than he ever did as an outlaw. Yazbek, Delapena, and Moses wisely lean in on the humor of the absurdity of the show. Yes, it does have scenes of sincere drama, particularly between him and his wife Maggie, played by Julia Niddle, and his showdown with the posse, but most of the scenes, even his multiple autopsies, are played for laughs. This, of course, means that your enjoyment of Dead Outlaw is going to be entirely dependent upon your comfortability with laughing at the exploitation of the dead. Durand, who I really enjoyed in Shucked, gives a jaw-dropping performance here as he plays the corpse through the entire second half of the play, staying frozen in the same position for over half an hour. It's impressive to watch. I looked up images of the real Elmer McCurdy, and though Durand is far better looking than the real Elmer, he freezes in exactly the same position that Elmer was in when he was on display. It's a wonderful detail. Yazbek and Delapena's music is a raucous, toe-tapping southern rock score led by Jeb Brown, who also plays the show's narrator and the head of the gang of robbers Elmer joins up with. As much as I am tickled by the show's concept, the staging of Comer, coupled with Arnulfo Maldonado's scenic design, doesn't work for me. The band is set up in the middle of the stage and draws too much attention, especially since they are in a large, boxed set piece that rotates several times in order to accommodate the staging of the actors. At one point, the afternoon I was in attendance, the cables that power the equipment on stage caught on the casters under the set piece, and the stage crew spent about five minutes, while the scene continued, trying to get the cables free from under the set. Just move the band to some degree in a stationary platform upstage or stage left or stage right and leave it at that. Also, having Jeb Brown doing the narrative as a front man makes some of the musical numbers come off too much concert and not enough theater. There were two ways I think that could have gone better. One is to take a page from Sondheim's Assassins and make Jeb into more of a balladeer who moves independently instead of being up with the band. The other option I thought of was maybe give some of the narrative responsibilities to Andrew Durant and tell the story from an afterlife perspective, which would have had its own kind of humor to infuse to the story if done right. Dead Outlaw is, like I said, gallows humor through and through. If you're not into that kind of thing, this isn't the show for you. The staging can be better regarding the band, and I think Jeb Brown's part and or the dialogue for him can be better served through restaging or letting the dead Elmer tell the story instead. So a bit of work should be considered if Dead Outlaw should go to Broadway, but I still think it is a hilarious show with an outrageous premise, a rollicking good score, and is led by a fantastic performance by Andrew Durand. 
But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Dead Outlaw, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. Also in the description will be a link to my Patreon page, so be sure to check that out as well. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be Lawrence Fishburne's one-man show, like they do in the movies, currently off-Broadway. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.